So I decided to come home. I wanted to be a part of my family. I got tired of seeing family photos that I wasn't in. And um, I really had no idea what the next step was. So Reno called me in. I started doing quite a bit of energy work. I got in a car accident like two days after I moved here. Uh, it was not a fun experience. And I decided to quickly stop drinking after that. Um, and from that experience, I decided to start my business. Now, when I started my business, I was going to uh, BNI networking meetings to no avail. I was going to as many um, coffee shops as I could put flyers in to no avail. <laughs> I was doing everything that I thought I knew or thought I could do, and it just wasn't working at all. And this went on for probably about a year. Um, I ended up getting a business coach, business mentor, and that's when everything changed. For those of you that know me, you know the story, so maybe we'll go into it a little bit later. But for me, through that whole process, I'm still going like, why am I back in Reno? Like, I could not get out of there fast enough when I graduated high school. But Reno is in a basin. As you all know, we have 360 degrees of mountains all the way around us. And in that 360 degrees of mountains, there's us. There is a very interesting like cloud of consciousness around the city, and I don't know if many of you have been able to see it, but it literally looks like a big giant cloud of heightened vibrational frequencies that's literally right above this city. So as I've been doing this work and as I've been growing into it, I've started to watch that there's more and more connections happening to it. And there are quite a few people here in this city that are doing the work and helping people wake up and really starting to create a movement. Most of us are very connected to each other because we care. <laughs> um, but Reno in and of itself, I don't know, has anyone here been to Sedona? Other than the graduates of the Earth Angels program? <laughs> um, okay, beautiful. So you felt the vortex there? Yeah. It's super heightened, right? It's like you're just buzzing the whole time. And then same, for me, it's same with Maui. It's like you're just buzzing. Reno to me is, is in that, it's in that trajectory. It's happening. There is an underbelly. There's, I, I've seen um, right by my office, there's some people who live in a house that have bumper stickers that say, keep Reno sleazy. To me, I'm like, yes. Can't clean it all up. <laughs> Gotta have some of those roots there, right? Um, but really and truly, there is a huge conscious movement that's happening in this city that's drawing a lot of attention and a lot of it are a lot of people are looking at it as the art movement the renaissance you know the midtown district everything's cleaning up but people like i'm having way more conscious conversations than i ever thought that i would it's growing up here it was a different it was a different city completely different so that's why reno why I become all of these things for me are like completely divinely guided and divinely inspired um <laughs> I also have learned that doing three events in less than nine months is something crazy people do. So I have learned that I am way more crazy than I thought I gave myself credit for. Um, but become this event, uh, the first one was absolutely life-changing for me, but I also know everybody there. I did not get a report back from anyone that was at the first one that did not say that that event changed their life in some way, shape, or form. Ascend was a little bit different. This one I'm bringing it back to become I'm bringing it back to my roots. I'm bringing it back to, I've had uh, several business coaches in the last few years. I haven't been working one, with one in the last four months and I've really started to actually learn who I am and how I want to run my business and how I want to show up in the world and how I want to be seen. And so there's been a lot of unraveling for me as far as seeing that and my message more clearly because before that, it was pickled and influenced by the people that I was being taught by, which is a beautiful thing. There's nothing wrong or bad about that. It's just, it's kind of like you have to learn how to write simple sentences before you can write a novel. I had to learn from certain people what their sentences were in order to figure out how I wanted to write my own book. So that's where I'm at. That's what this event is going to be about, and hopefully for all of you. Okay, so you get to co-create your experience here. This is your event. There's no rules, breakdowns, other than you know, re being respectful, but you get to co-create your experience. You will get out of this what you put in with it. 
there are people in this room right now that are your lifetime friends that you have not met before. I can guarantee you that. I have made lifelong friends at events like this that I never in my life <laughs> would have ever like talked to. One of them, dear friend of mine, we were talking about this again last night. Um, we are talking about like, okay, well, why do you keep everybody outside the doors for so long <laughs> before you let them in the room? Well, how many of you made a new friend while you were sitting out there mingling? Yeah? Yeah? A few people you wouldn't normally have talked to? If I left those doors open, would you just come and sit in your chair and like, ooh, dick around on your phone for a minute and be like, is it nine yet? Where is she? Right? That's what we do. It's human nature to avoid people. <laughs> for some funny reason. So when you're out there and you're just experiencing other people, say hi to people that you wouldn't normally. Connect with the people with whom you feel that energetic pull. When there is an energetic pull, there's a reason that you're meant to be talking to them. Follow it. I do have to say, please don't be creepy about this. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. There's people that you meet and they're like, I just had to come and meet you. You're like, why are you plugging into my energy right now? Can we just talk or something? Like, I know you know what I'm talking about. There's some people that get really weird about talking about energy and being like, ooh, you feel good to me. Just be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I see you. What's your name? These are normal questions to break the ice. <laughs> Okay, setting clear intentions. We're gonna go into this a little bit more here in a minute. Setting your clear intentions is really what is going to help you get the most out of this. Um, I have in, in some of the psychedelic healing ceremonies that I have participated in and some that I have simply witnessed and held space in, this is where I learned the most about setting intentions. I know that sounds pretty interesting and maybe a little bit weird, but when you go into a ceremony or any sort of healing ceremony and you don't set any clear intentions, it's just kind of like, it's like throwing a handful of flour outside of an air balloon. It's just like, well, you did it, but what happened? So when you set that intention, setting the intention is more like lining up that dart and saying, this is what I want to get out of this. This is how you co-create your experience. This is how you use your own free will to create the life that you want to get to your destiny. Your destiny is going to happen. Your destiny is the reason that you are here. But what you get to understand and what you do have control of is your free will of how you experience the path of life. Things are going to happen. Fate's going to step in and say, hey, you're supposed to read this book. Or, hey, you're supposed to talk to this person. Hey, this is the next step. That, to me, is what fate is. Fate is your guys coming in and being like, okay, let's get, let's get her back on track a little bit. <laughs> they come in, they say hi. Your free will is how you get to experience it. And this isn't about, like, choosing to be happy. Have you guys met the delusional happy person? You're like, No. There's a reason that you're sick. <laughs> there's a reason there's problems, even though you're so happy about it. It's like, no, you have to be able to see that your free will gets to choose the depth of which you experience life. You can be happy. You can pop volume for the rest of your life and just be happy sailing along. But what happens? There's a deadening inside. Right now, all of you have a piece of you that is dead inside of you right now that you're carrying along with you because you're attached because it took you so long to create that dead part. You hearing what I'm saying? We attach to things that we've invested in. So we want to get the most out of it. But when it dies, when a relationship hits its expiration date, when a job hits its expiration date, when something has served its purpose in your life, we must learn to surrender and let go. To learn more about my upcoming events, programs, and retreats, please visit samanthafay.com forward slash revolution. 
I do wish you the very best that life has to offer, and please remember, we are in this together.